Georgia Tech's JBX 9300FS 100 kilovolt direct right electron beam lithography system is capable of producing patterns at the nanometer scale and is a powerful tool for enabling cutting edge nanotechnology research. The JBX 9300 features a Gaussian spot beam, vector scan, a step and repeat stage, and is capable of manually varying the beam current from 50 picoamps to 100 nanoamps. Its dynamic correction system eliminates defocusing resulting from beam deflection. The JBX 9300 is capable of producing a minimum 4 nanometer electron beam diameter, operating at either a 50 kilovolt or 100 kilovolt accelerating voltage, and utilizes a zirconium oxide tungsten thermofield emission source. The system has less than 20 nanometer field stitching accuracy and less than 25 nanometer overlay accuracy at 100 kilovolts. The tool has demonstrated 6.5 nanometer line widths patterned in negative HSQ resist and 10 nanometer line widths in positive ZEP 520A resist. The JBX9300 is capable of processing many different sample sizes. Samples can be as small as 4 by 5 millimeter pieces and as large as 300 millimeters. In addition, 5 inch and 6 inch square quartz mass substrates can be loaded. For the purposes of this training video, we will be using a 4 inch silicon wafer. For more information about the JBX 9300's capabilities, please visit the Nanolithography website at nanolithography.gotech.edu. Let's now introduce our lab users. To begin using the JBX9300, you must first log into the system at the access controller, which is located at the entrance of the processing area. All the wafer cassettes are contained in plastic boxes on the metro shelving in the main column room. Each of the boxes are labeled with the cassette size. You should select the box containing the cassette that you need. Carefully place the cassette box on the stainless steel table. Undo the clasps on the outside of the container box. Take the top off and put it aside. You should also remove the foam cover on the inside of the box and place it aside as well. Before touching the cassette, you should put on a pair of vinyl gloves which are provided in the work area. The reason for this is to try to keep the cassette as clean as possible. Even though you are already wearing gloves, there is always the possibility that they could have been contaminated with chemicals or stray particles found in other parts of the clean room. Carefully remove the cassette from its container box. Place the cassette upside down on the stainless steel table. To begin loading your wafer, you must first push down on the leaf springs on the backing plate and gently twist with your fingers. Then undo the rotation lock lever. Carefully remove the backing plate and place it upside down on the table. The reason for this is because there are grounding pins on the backing plate which become contaminated if they were to come in contact with the table. Pull back on the spring-loaded wafer securing pin and then place your wafer face down into the cassette. There are three alignment pins in the wafer holder. Your wafer must be pressed flush against each of these pins in order for it to be properly aligned. Once your wafer is in the proper position, you should replace the backing plate. Make sure to place the guide pins on the backing plate into their slots so that the backing plate is properly aligned. Be careful not to touch any of the six flat positions on the cassette. The stage inside the system grasps the cassette at these locations. If they were to become scratched or damaged, the positioning accuracy of your sample could be compromised. Before you can load the cassette into the system, you must first unlock the door to the platform by pressing the unlock button. The button will illuminate once it is unlocked. You should then open the door. The green door open light will come on. Once the door is open, you can load the cassette. 
Make sure that the cassette is facing wafer side up. Carefully place the cassette onto the platform. Slide the cassette so that the hook on the edge of the cassette is flush against the rollers. Do not load the cassette upside down onto the platform. Doing so can cause damage to the cassette or the entire unit. Once the cassette is in position, close the door and hold it closed for a few seconds until the green door open light turns off. Once you have placed the cassette onto the platform, you can load the cassette by performing the following steps at the Unix workstation. You must first select the auto loader or ALD button from the EBX menu. The ALD graphical user interface or GUI should then appear. Select the left arrow button at the bottom of the GUI to send the cassette from the platform to the stage. The software should detect the presence of the cassette and will ask you to verify that you want to load it. Click the Yes button. The software will automatically load the cassette into the system. It will first load into the ALD which is similar to a load lock. It takes approximately 15 minutes for the ALD to pump down to high vacuum. Once the ALD reaches high vacuum, the cassette will be placed onto the stage. The ALD should then return to the home position. When you are finished, close the ALD window by selecting Exit from the File drop-down menu. You should now be able to run your process. When your process is complete, you can begin to unload the cassette. To do this, you must first select the ALD button from the EBX menu. The ALD GUI should then appear. Select the right arrow button at the bottom of the GUI to send the cassette from the stage to the platform. The software should detect the presence of the cassette and will ask you to verify that you want to unload it. Click the Yes button. The software will automatically unload the cassette. The cassette will reload into the ALD. It will take approximately 5 minutes for the ALD to vent to atmosphere. At this point you should unlock the door and remove the cassette from the platform. Make sure that you continue to wear the second pair of gloves when handling the cassette. Place the cassette upside down on the stainless steel table and remove the backing plate. Remove your wafer and then replace the backing plate. Place the cassette back into the container box and replace the foam cover over the top of the cassette. Once the container lid is securely fastened, place the container box back under the shelf in its original location. When you're finished using the JBX9300, you should log out at the access controller. A wet bench is available to users for the purposes of developing resist, cleaning substrates, performing a liftoff process, or any other reasons a wet bench might be required. You should now have a pretty good understanding of the proper etiquette and basic procedures for loading a sample into a cassette, loading a cassette into the system, and unloading a cassette from the system. If you have any further questions in regard to the content of this training video, 
or if you wish to learn more about the processing capabilities of the JBX9300FS, please contact the trainer for this equipment. Please do not ask Charlie.